you guys, this is like my second time filming this freaking video because the first time I filmed this on um, the actual Thursday, but that didn't work out because there was like traffic in the house, so it wasn't fucking happening. Um, so, um, as you can tell from the title, um, actually housekeeping first. So, it is the new year and I know that in one of my other videos I did promise that I would start this series about moving, but I'm actually still not even done. Like, I'm just not even done. I haven't figured everything out yet for that. And I also want to incorporate other elements beyond just me talking, like round table elements, things like that. Um, there's no can incorporate those into my series. I'm not entirely sure yet. But it has, it, it's, a, it's a little more complicated than I thought it would be, unfortunately. So I'm really um, going to be, I'm still going to be working on the moving series. What I'll probably do is, because it's going to be 52 videos, it's a whole week. And it's part of the, um, it's going to be part of the playlist of creating equitable media um, because that's the whole focus of it is really um, understanding um, and looking at the processes of media and, well, not just, what well, through media, which is me talking to you on camera um, and looking at equity and the kind of issues that people with disabilities who move face. So I'm just trying to kind of sort all that out and my life, which is <laughs> obviously a work in progress, as you all know. Um, this week, it was weird. I had a really weird week. I'm obviously back at home with my family. I'm in my living room, which, like, my life is just here. Um, so I was, two days ago, I was getting dinner for my family, and some freaking weirdo followed me home. And so I was, like, walking. This guy came out of nowhere because it's really dark in my neighborhood. And just starts talking to me, and I'm trying to be nice, trying to tell him, you know, back off. And he, like, followed me into my building and, and uh, like, into the elevator. And I was like, can you leave? Can you, like, he's like, can I can I take you to apartment? No, you can't take me to my goddamn apartment. Go home. Um, so, yeah, that was very odd. That's really annoying, too. And it's really dangerous. Like, that could have ended completely differently than the way it did. But anyway, so on to the title. So a lot of people do these videos, and they're pretty funny, and they're clever, and they're comical. I'm not the comical type when it comes to these videos. Um... I think that this is, I mean, it's going to be kind of funny, I guess, but not ha ha ha, but funny like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, you're right. So I guess just let's jump into it. So the five things I wish school would have taught me. One, I'll be referring to this over here. You cannot see it, obviously, I realize now. Um, it's kind of my list because you guys know from my last video, I do forget a lot. Um, taxes. More importantly, not just how taxes work, but the services available to me through my taxes um, or through my lack of taxes. How much do I have to make to file taxes? How much do I make when I don't file taxes? What services, social services, healthcare, otherwise, am I entitled to depending on my income of taxes? I say that because even if I was well, in high school, if you, even if I was graduating from high school in one state and going to another, financial literacy is really important because a lot of students wind up taking out loans because they can't pay for certain things. Like when I moved from my grad program, I had to take out a loan to pay for my health insurance. My health insurance is bullshit, by the way. I, I, it was 1700 and something dollars a year and then I have all these co-pays and now the hospital sends me extra bills, which I have no idea. I call them and they're like, oh, is this fee, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, my insurance should be paying all of this. So. You know, now I have a better understanding of I needed to make this much to file in New York. The threshold may be different in other states. I need to know where to look for that. I need to be able to know what services I'm entitled to because I am entitled because of my the low income I make because of the program I'm in. I am entitled to get free health insurance and possibly food stamps if I need it. Um, and I think it's important. I really wish I had known that beforehand because, you know, before I was on my mother's insurance because I was old enough, but now that I'm older and I'm on my own insurance, it's like, and all the, all these other extra costs. I think that a comprehensive or more comprehensive understanding of taxes besides you have to pay them would have been really good, um, especially since, you know, we're kind of going straight into a world where knowing about health you know, health is, it becomes more independent. Your parents take care of less and less of that as you get older. And that's really the cutoff point. Once you become an adult, you may be moving out of state, you may be moving out of the country for college or work or whatever opportunities you're going through and dealing with. But what you need to be able to do is be financially literate. And taxes are a very important aspect of financial literacy. Social services, healthcare, very important aspect of financial literacy. Off on that little rant. The other thing was sexism, racism, and ableism. Um, and about being better 
um, that, that you have to be way better if you're an othered person or a, a minority just to get to the same place that, you know, people who are in the mainstream or considered mainstream are. So, you know, the fact that I'm, you know, I'm, you know, an intelligent woman, you know, that doesn't mean shit because I'm also still, you know, a woman of color from a low income area and people will see that on my resume. They'll see my zip code. They'll see my name. And they'll even, if they see my accomplishments and my CV is 10 pages long, they'll still go, no, we'll just give it to this other mediocre person, whatever. Whether it's a man, whether it's a white man, whether it's, you know, someone else who's less othered or whatever. But it just, it doesn't just extend beyond sexism and, and racism. Obviously, ableism plays a role in it because if there's somebody with a disability and me and they have more qualifications, I may not, sorry, that's my mother in the background yelling at somebody. Um, I may not have... I may have the edge on them unfairly, like they may be more qualified than me, but I have, you know, I have the edge because, oh, I'm not in a wheelchair, or, oh, I don't have crutches or something like that, which is, again, bullcrap. It's ridiculous. Like, why do you have to be so much exponentially better to get to the same freaking place or not even because that person may not even get hired? And I think I wish school would have taught me that. You're going to go into this area, and you're going to go into the world. And yes, as minorities, a lot of us do learn that this world is unfair. That's a lot through our experience, through our community teachings, through our parents, that kind of thing, through media. But there's not a lot of media literacy that you learn in high school. And I really wish high school, especially since a lot of high schools love to use, you know, technology and stuff, media literacy is very important and understanding those things are really important. And that leads to my next one, which is facilitating change. How do I change the world around me? You know, how do I change the system that was obviously, you know, stacked against my favor? How do I create a more equitable system, not only for myself, but for other people? And I think that school does have the opportunity to do that because, well, I went to a school in a very metropolitan area. Uh, you know, we had a very big pluralism of ideas. I think a lot of people think that New York City is just super uber liberal, but it's not like that at all. Um, there are people who are very conservative. There are people who are very, you know, this way or that way or very, they consider them old fashioned. Know, comment um and all of those you kind of learn to network and you know learn about different people's experiences and you learn about the the different hardships that they're pay facing or as Patricia Hill Collins will call the matrix of domination or how people are oppressed through multiple lenses and I think that school considering we were there from like was it nine to four every day no was there like now, breakfast is at 7.30. I was there from like 7.30 to 4 o'clock every damn day. You couldn't teach me that, oh, after class, maybe you guys should, you know, meet up and talk about your, you know, these experiences and what you can do about them. And I think that New York City, considering how political and active it is, I think that teaching us that, even if we taught it in school and we went to a different school, different area, to kind of bring that with us to really, you know, kind of push forward the idea that, yes, you guys are really good and you're all really smart. I went to a very good school whatever um but it's not just about being really good it's not just about being really smart it's about what you do it's not just about what you know it's about what you do it's about being active and I think that I wish my school would have taught me more about being active as opposed to having to learn about all of this stuff getting washed over with all this stuff and just blindsided with all this stuff once I got to college um and I think also helping me to understand that change was okay because from high school to college is a pretty drastic change or for me it was because none of my friends went to the same college I did we all went to colleges very far away some went upstate some went to schools in different boroughs our schedules were different our majors are different but this drastic change happens and it was funny I was talking to another friend of mine who's in my program and we're saying that in the United States going to college is seen as something traumatic and it is it's taught it is in the sense that it is taught to be traumatic. It is taught that you're being ripped away from a structure that you've been a part of for 17, 18 years, and you are being placed into another structure which you know nothing about. So it's like you're ripping an organ out of one body and placing it into another body where it may or may not fit. Good luck. So that is... That is something that I, I really did struggle with, especially, you know, dealing with like depression and, you know, suicide and self-harm and all those other kinds of things. That drastic of a change was very hard for me and a lot of other people because it is, it is a traumatic thing. And I really wish, you know, it would have been the idea of sh transitioning from college to high school would have been seen as a celebration and not a tragedy because it is, it is a celebration of self. You are going 
to start, you know, a type of academic career, a type of academic life, and you will have resources that you didn't even know available to you. Probably because your high school didn't tell you because they're keeping it to themselves. But, you know, you would have these things available to you that you didn't have before. And I think that that's really something that you need to mentally be prepared for. And I really think that, where else would you learn this shit? What high school? Sorry. Always yawning. Always. Um, where else would you have learned this? I think the other thing would, if you, to think about was about how to, like, considering, you know, about the changing or whatever, how to let bad people go. Now, there were people who I was friends with in high school who I'm not friends with anymore. Um, I think I told you in my other video, I forgot which one, it was either the Complacent Feminist video or the one I did right before this one, about culling my friends list on Facebook. And a few of them were friends from high school because they weren't really friends. They were actually bad people. They were bad in terms of they were toxic for me, but I missed the feeling that I got when I was with them in high school because we were together four or five times a day, you know, four or five times, yeah, well, four or five times a day, depending on how many classes you have together, you know, five days a week. And so we built this relationship surrounded by these kind of old things, surrounded by what we knew in high school, who we were in high school, and we weren't those people anymore. And we had changed, or some of us had changed and some of us hadn't. Some of us couldn't really be the change, you know, be able to change. And we were stuck in that mode. And, you know, sometimes that's good to kind of think about the world from a more innocent point of view, but sometimes you need to grow the fuck up. You are not in high school anymore. You cannot say, oh, be that oh, that email team, oh, my parents are the worst all the time. I hate them. They're the worst. Blah, blah, blah. You can't be that all the fucking time. Okay, you need to, s I don't want to use the word step up, but you need to fucking, you know, to the plate. You need to, you know, own up to your own responsibilities. You need to go, well, you know, my parents, maybe they're a piece of shit, but maybe they're not. Maybe I need to be more responsible. Maybe I need to be less sporadic. Maybe this isn't high school anymore and I can't just go off and do this and then expect my parents to have me because they don't have me. Um, I had a friend like that. I will not get into details. I had the one, the video before about letting go of toxic people and I've had that issue. I had an issue where I had someone who was really stuck in that mode. Could not stand his parents. They were the worst people. They, you know, but at the same time he was not responsible. They, they had to continue to be the responsible adult in their relationship because he had never stepped up to being an adult. You know what I mean? He just did what he wanted and his parents would pay for these things. And, you know, and it was quite the opposite for me. There were a lot of things my parents didn't pay for. And I think that now it's really helped me prepare for, you know, the bills I pay now. The only extra bills I pay now, because I was paying my credit cards, I only have one credit card left, thank goodness. But, you know, you know rent... And, you know, I was paying my own transportation. There was a lot of bills I was paying, so I had to learn to budget. I had to learn to understand how my money was working for me. How much money am I getting in? How much money is going out? What can I spend on what? Where can I save? Those kinds of things. Because, again, school wasn't teaching me that shit. Um, so I needed to learn how to do those things on my own, you know, coming from a lower income family. My family did what they could, but they couldn't do as much as what my other, you know, friend's family could do. And although they could do so much for him, he always wanted them to do more. And it was, that was what it was always about, that they were never doing enough, although they were doing more than what all of our other parents could do because our parents couldn't afford to. You know, his parents could afford to do all these things for him and yet there was so much more he wanted. And I couldn't understand that because I'm like, at some point, my dear, you were in your mid-twenties. You need to now focus on... You know, what is my career? Because your parents at, at the age you were at were having you. They had a, they were having an apartment or they had a house. They had careers. Yeah, it's different for us because of socioeconomic issues. But you can't just be bullshitting and hoping and dreaming. Okay, you need to go. My parents are getting older. They're taking care of their parents. My younger brother stepped up to the plate. I need to step up to the plate. I need to learn to figure out what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go. I can't just run around directionals. I can't just take two vacations a year like I got it like that. I can't just hope my dad has me if something happens or that he's going to come do this or he's going to do that for me. No, you can't. You have to be an adult now. You have to just roll up your sleeves, get shit done. And I think that that was an issue that there were a lot of people like that that I recently just had to fucking let go of. It's like... I've had, a, there were a few people like that who were just stuck in that mode of my parents must do everything for me forever till they fucking die, and then I need to find some other relatives who are going to do that till they fucking die. Uh, no. Um, and in high school, your parents do do that. They do that, and you expect them not to die, of course. Um, 
but that's not how life is. That's not how it works. Um, so I guess that concludes this little <laughs> rant. Very, very weird sidestepping and ranting on my part. But I do hope you guys have a good new year. I will be working on the, um, the series. I will, I will, I will. Um, and do the videos and figure all that stuff out. Um, I'm trying to figure out what else. I know that I am almost done buying things for my Hall of Justice. There's just like the table and I want a very comfortable chair. I'm very weird like that. I just want a very comfortable chair. And then I'll probably, I mean, I'll post pictures on Facebook if I can. I'm trying to figure out how this, I don't know what's going on with my phone versus my Facebook app. It's acting funny. But what I will do is probably show you guys stuff I got for Christmas myself for Christmas. Um, my sister, I did want to show you guys this. I thought this was really cute. Um, my sister gave me, actually she bought me some makeup. Like I told you, I showed you the things she bought me, so I was going to show you these. She also gave me some of her, um, like liquid lipsticks, which I really love. They're so cute and they're so easy to apply. They, they are all the same color. Those are the same color. And then she got me these, which I thought were also very cute. Um, so yeah, these are like liquid lipsticks. And if you guys know anything, I wish you could have seen my nails. I had very, like, big nails and very ultra femme which is something I'm also very interested in I know you guys don't see that often but yes I do have this very ultra femme look I think once I do get the Hall of Justice set up you will see me wearing makeup in my videos I'm also going to try and film on the camera that I bought to film things on uh big shocker I actually am not supposed to be filming from my webcam um so I'll be getting all those in order hopefully I will. I'll get them all in order. And so hopefully by February, everything is done to the first video or the second video. I don't know how the weeks work anymore. You'll see in February, we'll have those things. Um, I may do, if I ever do beauty related stuff that's not particularly vlogging, that will be another playlist that will probably just show up sometime in the week. I might not even advertise it on YouTube. I don't on YouTube, on Facebook. I might not tell my Facebook friends. It's just a a side thing. I mean, it's another aspect of who I am, but it's not entirely who I am. I prefer the vlog format. I prefer to be the vlogger um, and do these kind of weird, archaic backgrounds like I tried to do it like that. Um, so that's something that I just want to let you guys know. If I do start doing beauty stuff, which is, like I said, another part of my life, then I will um, just have a separate playlist for that. It'll just show up in the middle of the week at some point. Um, and there's that. So I hope you guys have a great new year. I know I, I had a really great 2015. Year in review. It was really fucking kick-ass 2015. I got into the grad program. I got a pretty good stipend. I can afford to pay for my own shit. Um, and, you know, I'm applying for conferences. I'm applying for, you know, pay, different calls for papers. It was a really good year. And like I said before in another video, that all I'm trying to do is be better than me from last year. 2016 was Sheikah right here, right now. I was just trying to be better than was Sheikah from last year. And I really have a lot of catching up to do because I did a whole fucking lot last year. Last year was great. I started this vlog. I, you know, got my own place. I got into the college. I, you know, did all those things. So I'm going to just try and run around, going crazy, doing conferences, kicking ass, taking names, just, you know, working on my brand, building up who I am, and really kind of trying to find myself. Um, so yeah, so I hope you all had a great year. I hope everything, you know, works out great for you guys. And, you know, have a good night. I will see you guys next week. Have a good Sunday.